and it, it was weird in a way as in I, I didn't know if I was going to be good enough yet if you understand um, yeah because I've never been tested at a level like that um, mm -hmm. so I was kind of insecure about my game which was mm -hmm. um, tough but Welcome back to Life Behind the Pitch, episode 5. On this week's episode, we interview Bass. Bass is an international Dutch cricketer and a British rapper and made his international debut at the age of 18. On this week's episode, we talk about how he was making his debut at a young age. We speak about his cricket career and we speak about how he was going through the entire youth setup and then making his international debut. And Bass gives advice on a young cricketer struggling with mental health. Let's take it forward to the episode. So, how did you start your cricket career? Um... Well, actually, from a young age, I always um, went to games with my dad as he played. Um, mm -hmm. He played for the Netherlands for quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you kind of grow into the game and then um, realize you're OK at it or you, you're doing well. And at your club, you get um, yeah, put up to the Dutch youth um, team's trials. Um, and through that, basically, go through the system and that's how I how I how I am where I am now mm -hmm. so your dad played a lot of cricket how is it living under the same household and is there sort of pressure added to the game or is it relaxed and calm um definitely no pressure from him I think he's been um very mm -hmm. open to me also playing other sports so I played football from a young age um and he always said listen if you don't like cricket you don't have to play it um but I did enjoy it uh, a lot, so I kept on playing. Um, but yeah, there's there's no pressure from him to perform or anything. He uh, mm -hmm. he wants me to to do what I want and what I like and what I love. Um, mm -hmm. And if that's cricket, that's cricket. And otherwise, he says there's there's more things to life than cricket. Um, mm -hmm. So he's 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 kind of chilled, which is very nice. I think mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes people do expect certain things from you because. He obviously played at a high level, um, yeah. but yeah, he, he's not like that, luckily. Mm -hmm. So you went through the entire process of playing youth cricket and then men's cricket. Many people around the world do that. What sort of advice would you give for them through that process? And what sort of things did you do to help you through that process? Um, I think it is important to stand out in a way of attitude. Because um, mm -hmm. obviously you look at, most of the youth um, setups around the world, most of the guys that play under 19s, under 17s, they never make the, the men's team. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to find out how to make the most out of every, uh, how to get the most out of every training. Um, and for me, I think that is the attitude towards training. You know, you can't just rock up um, and expect things to be done for you and people to do things for you. You've got to, you've got to take charge of your own game and, mm -hmm. If you're, yeah, if you're in a under 17, under 19 team, you gotta, you gotta try and figure out how to, to do the extra, the extra things that other guys don't do to stand out um, that way. On the topic of training, um, how do you maximize your one session? Say you have a training for an hour, how would you maximize it? Um, I, I definitely think planning is important. So um, come up with a plan before training, know what you want to work on. So be clear in. Um, your goal for the training um, and then trying to do everything 100% right so even if it's throwdowns you try and do everything right each ball um, mm -hmm. yeah so maximize I reckon have a clear plan before coming to training and then after training you want to look and reflect upon what you've done you know did mm -hmm. you do what you wanted to do did you not do and why did you not do it um, did you execute all the the things and the plans you wanted to work on? Um, so I mm -hmm. definitely think planning and having a clear understanding of what you want to work on is is very important. Mm -hmm. Do you keep like a diary of sorts of like what you want to do or stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, I've got a I've got a little notebook um, and it's not as detailed. I don't go into every session, but I've got my um, goals. For example, this winter we were training for six months, so. I got mm -hmm. my goals that I want to achieve at the end of the six months. And then every month, you know, what, what do I need to work on in order to achieve the goals? Um, 
mm-hmm. at the end. So yeah, kind of, I kind of got a little bit of a notebook going on. Um, mm-hmm. But then mostly it's just night before the, uh, the next uh, training day, I'm just going to think about um, what I want to do um, it, when I'm laying in bed, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't you have to be massive, just small. Mm-hmm. So you made your debut at a very, very young age. How was it making your debut that early? Um, it, it, it was weird because um, uh, it was in November, I think. So mm-hmm. I only started training with the squad um, at the end of that summer. So let's say September. Um, and it, it was weird in a way, as in I, I didn't know if I was going to be good enough yet, if you understand, um, yeah. because I've never been tested at a level like that. Um, mm-hmm. So I was kind of insecure about my game, which was mm-hmm. um, tough, but then obviously the coaches help you and the players and you, you start speaking to them and they, they prepare you in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to be um, around players like Ryan Tindeskata, Rulof von der Merwe, Peter Saylor at, at mm-hmm. such a young age and to be able to train and play with them. How'd you handle the nerves before the big game? Like once you got told you're playing, how'd you handle the nerves? Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, I think I'll, I'm going to come back to um, planning. Um, mm-hmm. If you know what you do well and you've been doing those things well training, you've got to trust that you've prepared well enough um, mm-hmm. for the game. So, yeah, in a way, you've got to trust your own abilities and your own processes um, to be able to cope with the, the pressure or the bowlers that you're going to face. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think you can, you have to worry too much about other stuff, which is tough because obviously you're always going to get nerves and especially if it's mm-hmm. your first game. Um, but yeah, I think trusting that what you've done for the past year, year and a half um, is going to help you and um, cope with the pressure. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the way I deal with it, or try to deal with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you seem very confident in your own game and like you start planning it. How would you tell people, like I struggle with it. When I come out of the pitch, I'm always like a 10% of my mind is always struggling with, okay, what if I get out a duck? What if I get hit today? How do you be more confident at the, at the pitch? Um, for me, it's shifting your mindset to not getting out or being worried about getting out into, okay, where can I look to score runs if they ball me a good ball? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think with that, if I if I struggle with my first um, couple of balls where I'm thinking oh, I can't get out and I need to you know get in, um, my footwork goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what's what's helped me is to start looking for runs and to to start um, looking for runs on good balls. Mm-hmm. And in that way, I get into better positions and I I look more confident in my first balls. And it sends out a message to the opposition as well, like oh this guy's you know here to play. He knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think for me, shifting my mindset from not getting out to, okay, where can I score runs has helped me massively um, mm-hmm. in that way. This last couple of years with COVID, we've been away for our game for so long. And I think it's affected people mentally a lot in this last couple of years. So what would you do? What advice would you give to young cricketers around the world who are struggling with mental health or being away from the game for a long period of time? Um, talk to people. Um, I mean, I've... I've had um, downs as well where you you think, okay, well, you know, am I ever going to play another game? You know, am I going to be good enough when we get out of um, uh, COVID? Um, you know, worried about the future. Am I going to be a professional cricketer in a couple of years or do I need to study? Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely talking to people has helped me a lot, um, mm-hmm. you know, to, to ease my mind, I guess. Um, and it doesn't have to be someone within cricket. It could be a mate, you know, from school or someone from work. Um, but yeah, definitely talking about it has helped me, um, a lot and finding things to do next to cricket, I guess. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much more to life than just cricket. So you gotta enjoy those things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and they can take your mind off, um, you know, the bad thoughts for a, for a bit. Mm -hmm. How do you motivate yourself? Say you have a bad day on the field, you get out for a duck or it doesn't go, the game doesn't go the way you want it. 
how do you push back how do you motivate yourself um is do you mean uh, after a game or during the game itself after the game or during the game as well um well i think during the game um obviously you know cricket's a team sport so you don't want to let your your, your mates down mm-hmm. um which motivates me you know if i've gone out for a duck where i'm getting hit for runs um i'm still thinking you know it's a team team effort in the end so i got to try and do the things i can still do well which is probably fielding or helping mm-hmm. other boys and chatting to them when we're betting mm-hmm. um to help the team um and then after the game i think it's it's good to reflect on bad performances but not for too long so mm-hmm. you know think about what you want to do better next game write it down and then leave it i think if you get stuck in negative thoughts too much you're going to lose confidence and mm-hmm. you know never get back um to where you want to be mhm would you train a different way like say you get out for like say two ducks in a row would you start training a different way would you stick to your processes i'd say stick to your processes um mm-hmm. it's I, i think it's tempting to go and try and change things or change your technique or worried about those um sort of things mhm but i think you know you you know what's got you to this level and even if you're you're not making runs at the moment it doesn't mean you're never going to make runs again um and what's got you to this level is the processes that you've been following and the things you've been doing at training um mm-hmm. so you just got to trust it and keep on doing it repeating it um mm-hmm. and then in the end you, you know you'll find a way to score runs again and maybe maybe there's a bit of luck involved sometimes which is always good but you know everyone's got a got a bad run now and then so yeah i wouldn't be too worried about changing things in my training or um anything like that no mhm what's your advice would you give to young batsmen who want to play swinging ball well um uh, yeah um the best advice is play the ball late and it sounds mm-hmm. easy um but for me what works is watching the ball onto my bat because a lot of young players i think um even myself i still do it sometimes i i watch the ball for a period of time and then as soon as i think okay i can hit that ball i start looking up to where i want to hit the ball mm-hmm. um i think when you're playing the swinging ball your head's the most important thing as it moves your body um uh so your head's the most important thing so if you're watching the ball for long enough you're going to get into good positions mm-hmm. anyway um so uh, i think especially against the swinging ball if it's in swing or out swing you got to watch the ball all the way onto the bat and play it as mm-hmm. late as possible mm-hmm. so on this show we have a rapid fire round um i like that she's second on the clock rapid fire ask you questions yeah cool so who's your funniest teammate uh paul the maker okay Who's your first okay so what's your first memory on the field? 5. First number yeah, so, is in your number yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay. And who do you hate bowling to? Uh, sorry, who do you hate facing the nets? Um Fred Clarkson. Okay. What's your most memorable moment on the field? Uh making my debut. Mhm. And what's one international player you would like to bat with? Abi de Villiers. Okay. If you weren't playing cricket what would you do? study work study <laughs> in what um well, I'm actually studying at the moment I'm doing business uh-huh. administration um uh-huh. that's on the side so I'd probably take it up full time okay would you feel at the infield or out at the boundary outfield outfield okay uh be able to bat with your other hand or bowl with your other hand bowl bowl your hand okay play t20 cricket or longer format long format I'm going for that. Okay. Uh would you rather score a century every few matches or score an average of 50 every match? Century. Century. Okay. Would you rather play in the heat or the cold? Heat. Heat. Okay, perfect. That's all the rapid fire questions I would have. Uh okay. just to sign off. What what's one piece of advice you would give to all cricketers around the world? Keep enjoying the game. As long as you're enjoying the game, um you're going to be happy playing it. Um mm-hmm. you know like you play sports for fun in the end um mm-hmm. don't be too worried about it even if you have a bad game now and then it's not the end of the world um and yeah there's always going to be better days mhm perfect 
Uh, that's the end of all the questions I have. Thank you so much for being on the episode. I had a great time chatting. Do hope the viewers enjoyed it as well. Thanks, man. It's been awesome. Um, first time I've done a podcast with someone about <laughs> cricket, so it's uh, it's my debut in a way. Um, but thanks for having me. I hope uh, I hope it goes well with the rest of them. Well, perfect. Thank you.